I used to work for an air, a company that produced aircraft engines, and um, there was a lot of information required to produce that engine, including the individual bits that for different bits and pieces. But you could actually digitize that into ones and zeros and put it on a, uh, a flash drive, for example. You could do that. And that flash drive now contains the functional information required to produce that aircraft engine. And, they, and that functional information can be evaluated or quantified in terms of these equations you see in scientific literature. Now, here's the thing. There is a threshold. There is a certain amount of information that can accidentally be produced in this world. Like say, for example, a child's collection of alphabet, plastic alphabet characters. You dump that on the floor and you can accidentally form a one letter word like ah, for example, no problem. You can actually maybe sometimes produce a two letter word like it or of or to. And that's, that's reasonably probable to do. So basically you don't need any functional information to produce a two letter word. All you have to do is tip the box over and there it goes. But the longer the word, then it becomes more difficult to form it by just dumping it on the floor. And especially if these words get strung together, start forming sentences. And this is why we know from observation that there is a threshold beyond which you're going to start needing an intelligent mind to produce that information. So you can accidentally produce trivially small amounts of information by dumping those alphabet characters on the floor. There is a threshold. And if you start wanting to produce, let's say, a, a new, more efficient aircraft engine, you're not going to try and get that information by dumping alphabet characters out on the floor.